Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be dissecting the new Oblivion remaster. We got an asset that I got out of the game so we can take a look at it in Blender. But I'm going to add a, a new thing to this video, which is we're going to go into the game and take a look at the game as a whole, because this one is also made with Unreal Engine. It also has the old Oblivion engine running the logic, but it's mostly Unreal Engine for the visual. So we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to talk about whether this game is moddable and how is it going to be modded. And then we're going to go into dissecting the asset and let's get started. Find him and close shut the jaws of oblivion. All right, here we are in oblivion. We are in the Imperial city. Just so we can see all the new assets. This is by all means a remake because everything that you see here, all the assets were had to be reconstructed. I'm positive they're using uh, some mega scans here and there for the outside environment. But yeah, 100% for sure this thing is a remake. Probably not in the logic place because the logic is being run by their original oblivion engine but other than that everything else is a remake you can see the nice looking normal maps you know they're normal maps because over here you can see that the effect is lost but if we go here near these rocks you can see this thing is pure geometry which i think it's amazing now one of the things i wanted us to look at was the graphics options and my 3090 is already falling short like i already had to put some things in high i cannot run everything in ultra but uh i do have something that i've never seen in other games and if you've seen this in other games just let me know in the comments but i personally haven't seen this before this is something that you turn on in the engine uh, to make things look a little bit better and yes, turning this on will improve a lot of things as long as you have an RTX uh, GPU. That's as far as I know. I don't know if it works with AMD, uh, but this is very costly. So Lumen is uh, Unreal way, Unreal's way of ray tracing. Uh, it's a little bit less intensive than actual ray tracing used to be, but it's by no means, uh, you know, super performance friendly. So that's why if you turn it on, you're going to see that things look a lot better, but performance is going to take a hit. So just bear that in mind. One of the things that everybody is loving about this game is how it's keeping the original animations, the original dialogue and everything. So you can see back in the time when things were not mocap, I'm pretty sure those animations were keyframe and they're good. They're just, you know, animations from those times. But overall, I think Unreal Engine has made this game look amazing. Overall, it's I mean, compared to what we had 20 years ago, this is incredible. Let's let's go in. There's a lot of beer here. Uh, let's see who lives in inside of this around here. The interior of this cave, I'm like 90 percent sure these are mega scans. This looks much better than the outside just because of the lighting and I see that there's a trap in there. Uh, don't know if I can trigger it. Okay, is somebody coming to greet me? It looks like they are. I don't know, can I trigger the trap? Let me see. Nope. Okay, come. Go into your trap. And nothing happened. Oh. Okay, that was very easy. I have it in normal. So don't judge me for that. But yeah, I just wanted to show you the interiors and... Got even some insects right here. I was looking to see if this has RVT. I don't think so. I think it's just using Nanite. Nanite is a way that Unreal process uh, really high resolution meshes, but 
Yeah, I think this is just using the night. But yeah, look at that. Yeah, look at the, the volumetrics, because this is all because of the probably the height fog that they have on with some volume light that's coming from the outside. Of course, it's not the real outside, but still, everything looks pretty good. What do we have here? Is that a rut? That thing dead? Yes, it is. All right, and with that, let's just go into dissecting today's asset. All right, before we um, start dissecting the assets, one of the things that I wanted to address is I see a lot of people on X and other platforms saying that because this is working in Unreal Engine, this is not going to be as moddable as the original Oblivion was. That is false. Games that are made in Unreal Engine are actually very easy to mod, even if the original developers say they don't support mods or whatever. And here is a write-up by Nexus Mods where they talk about this very thing. I'm going to leave a link in the description uh, so you can read the whole thing. It's very thorough. If you're into modding, it's very important that you look at this. But basically what it says is that, yes, mods are very compatible. Mods from the previous Oblivion, because this is running the original Oblivion engine, the previous mods do work, but sometimes the visuals don't show up in the game or there is an error because of the way that things are configured. And as you can see here, uh, it says the core data from the game is still loaded from the plugin files as with the original files. However, each game object in the plugin is mapped to the from Oblivion Engine to Unreal Engine using JSON, which is a way of making scripts. So there's a script that's practically bridging in between the Oblivion Engine and Unreal Engine. So modding is not going to be super easy because it's made with both of these things, but there will be mods and they are figuring out how to make this thing a lot easier than it is right now. As of right now, there are many, many mods on Nexus mods that you can download right now. But in my case, I am not a lot into the programming side, so I'm not very well versed into like digging into the files and all that. So I highly recommend that you go and read this link is in the description down below. So can you mod this? Yes, you can. So yeah, the answer is there are mods for Oblivion Remaster. There will be more in the future. It's just a little bit finicky right now because of the mix of the two engines. Uh, now, are you interested in seeing how I extracted the Smash from the Oblivion Remaster? Let me know in the comment section down below. All right, so let's get into dissecting these piece of armor. I have the wireframe on so you can see the topology of this armor is beautiful. It's beautiful quads all around. Look at this. Look at this shape. This thing is fantastic. And let's let's just isolate the chest plate. Uh, well, you can see a couple of things that we've been talking about already. Uh, one is that is uh, closed mesh, pretty much, except for the legs. But you can see there's everything is closed here, here, and here. So very interesting. Remember, we've seen some games where it's actually not. But yeah, I'm, I'm very blown away by how good this topology looks. But the thing that's very interesting is the fact that this thing is so dense. I can guarantee you, without even looking at it, that the Oblivion, the original Oblivion armor was not even half as dense as this thing is. In fact, let me, before I forget, uh, turn on the stats. There you go. If we unhide everything, everything is actually 66,000 triangles. That's the whole armor. And if we just get the uh, chest plate, is 35,000, so 36,000 roughly is just for the chest plate. There's no way that this would be just an armor piece in the original Oblivion, but now you can see this is a fairly high poly character for the standards that we used to have in video games. So that's why I call this more of a remake, even though they say it's a remaster. They had to remake this whole thing from scratch because there's no way they could have gotten this from the old game files. 
even though the topology is beautiful, you can see some triangles here and there. For instance, uh, this is just, you know, full triangles. This is finished into triangles and it's part of the same mesh, which again, as I always said, there is no reason not to have triangles where you can if that mesh is in the forming. So this mesh is a solid, so hard surface. It's not going to deform. Doesn't matter if you have triangles here. So you can see these are nice and the quads are fantastic. Uh, this goes very well for some pretty cool baking down the line. I'm just very surprised how this thing is made with these, the belts, these ornaments right here. Everything looks fantastic. All right, so what I did was uh, weld by distance pretty quickly just so we can see what things are uh, welded from the beginning and what things weren't. So if we have this, you can see that the undershirt of this plate is one single piece. It's one single welded mesh. So if you're new to the channel, playlist is in the description so you can see the other videos. But in the other videos, we have seen that this isn't one and done. It depends on your pipeline. It depends on your company's pipeline, whether you have welded mesh, uh, watertight meshes or not. In this case, as you can see, this plate has an undershirt or whatever. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the medieval naming convention for that. So as you can see, we have this kind of like separating the two. This is a full, full piece. Nothing is clipping. Let's unhide everything else and let's go and look at, let's look at the plate, front plate, isolated. And yeah, it has thickness. It's watertight mesh. So very, very impressive. Very cool looking, by the way. And you can see that these are pretty much layered. And I think that's pretty fun. Let's see one of these. Just select the whole thing and let's see if it's model all the way up or just this tip. And yeah, it is model all the way up and it's watertight. It has thickness. Yeah, I can see to be fair, if I was making this in ZBrush, which is the program that we usually use to sculpt these, it's very easy to just like retopologize the whole thing and create thickness on top of the high poly. Uh, that's probably why all these things have thickness and they're likely not worrying too much about uh, the mesh count, although this could have been denser and it isn't. So this is, um, in my opinion, a good like in between, like ha optimization and doing a high poly mesh because this isn't like in the hundreds of thousands like the Marvel rival characters but it's also not super low poly and the geometry is just beautiful, beautiful all around. All right, so let's look at the UVs. All right, we are in the UV side. We're gonna look at the texture in a second, but I just wanted you to see the UVs. Look at this layout. This is fantastic. Uh, if you watch the other video, you know I'm not a fan of UV unwrapping. This is something that you have to do. Uh, but look at how everything is laid down. So you can see that these are likely the belt portions. Let's just grab one belt. So yeah, this is the belt portion. Now let's just grab everything again. And you can see how everything is laid out perfectly. Now they do have, uh, unlike Marvel Rivals, where it has a lot of materials, these guys don't have as many materials. In fact, these guys don't have as many textures either, but the UVs are laid out perfectly. Not everything has to be laid out in a square ish fashion, as you can see from the arms. And I think this is the suit part area. So this isn't the, is this a chest plate? No, this is not a chest plate. Yeah, just as I thought. Uh, the chest plate is this part right here, but this is the undersuit, which again, very, very nice geometry. Uh, they're not using that trick that we talked about the other time where you put one thing next. 
let's see. Let's see what's up about this. All right, so this thing just has uh, geometry on top of geometry instead of having the UV next to it. So far, it seems more common to find the geometry on top of geometry as opposed to just have uh, one UV space right next to it. So if you've been here since the first video, you know that usually we've seen that whenever you have, because your characters are symmetrical for the most part, you can do things two ways. One is you overlay things one on top of the other, like it's doing right here. You can see that there is no UV for the other side. There's one UV for this side, and this one looks like it's on top of the other side or vice versa. That's a way to save on real estate. You don't have to have them unwrapped side by side. The other way that we talked about is having it one tile next. So you grab one of these and you make it so in the tile, instead of the zero to one space, you make it in the first tile. So those are the two ways that we've seen uh, things go over in the UVs. But as you can see, this is perfect. Let's load a texture. All right, here we have the diffuse um, for this model. They only have diffuse and uh, normal maps. I looked at the shader in the game and it doesn't seem to have a roughness map uh, or any sort unless there's a master material on real talk. Uh, it might be another video if I see there's interest in people seeing the unreal side of this. But as you can see, the diffuse channel right here pretty cool how everything is laid out so as you can see this armor in blender looks fantastic let's just switch back here and everything looks pretty awesome and it's, again the geometry for me it blows me away whoever modeled this perfect geometry all around now do you want to see something else from this game do you want to see environment pieces or weapons or anything else just leave me in the comment section down below I want to see if there's more interested in seeing stuff from the Oblivion remaster or should I move to another uh, game? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know if you're interested in, in seeing how I get these models out uh, for examining here in Blender. Thank you so much for watching all the way till this point. Uh, remember, leaving a like and leaving a comment goes a long way for helping a channel as small as mine. Uh, links to my other socials are down in the description. I'll see you in the next one.